Just putting one of your feet into the water would be a horrible idea millions of years ago, because this is where the true horror lies. Like gigantic piranha of the species Mega Piranha Paranensis. These were 4 times as long and 20 times as heavy as modern piranha. They actually were big enough to tear large chunks out of a human. Today's piranha can hardly even damage your little finger, even though they have an incredibly high bite force for their size. A 2 pound piranha can bite with a force of 320 newtons. But they only really bite you if you stick your finger directly into their mouth, like Coyote Peterson. A Mega Piranha had a bite force of 4750 newtons. In proportion to their body weight, that's the highest bite force out of any fish. And they also had terrifying teeth. But even with all of that, they are still one of the weakest creatures in this video. Even if a bunch of hungry Mega Piranha attacked you, you could probably still manage to get to the shore if you weren't too far out. Maybe with a few fingers less, but maybe even unharmed. Since there is a possibility that these giant prehistoric piranha were actually vegetarians, just like many piranha species are today. As long as you don't disturb them, they wouldn't attack you. Your chances against a Darkosaurus are much worse. This was a very strange crocodile with unique attributes. On first glance, they look more like marine reptiles like Tylosaurus than a crocodile. And on second glance, you could mistake them for a carnivorous dinosaur. At first people actually thought its teeth belonged to a Megalosaurus. But Darkosaurus was a crocodile, just a very unusual one that lived more like a giant shark. Its feet evolved to paddle-like fins and its tail to a fish-like tail fin that can generate even more propulsion. In contrast to modern crocodiles, Darkosaurus did not hunt fish but marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs. Its three-foot skull was full of four-inch long teeth that it could use to dismantle those animals. Or of course also you. Just like any other croc they had incredibly strong jaw closing muscles. And thanks to their triangular skull, the deeply rooted teeth with serrated edges and their pliosaur like symphysis of the lower jaw, they could tear huge chunks out of their prey by turning their heads. In water a human being is pretty much helpless and escaping such dangerous creatures would be impossible, especially the next one. This is Xyfectinus, a 20 foot long predatory fish that was so ugly that everyone died. But it also had a second special ability and that is its speed. Thanks to its powerful tail fin, it could reach speeds of 40 miles per hour. And that with a proud weight of 1000 pounds. This fish crashing into you while swimming would be like an underwater car crash with a pretty small car, but still. And Xyfectinus also had frightening teeth in its 12 inch long lower jaw. And a healthy appetite. One specimen was found with the fin of a mosasaur in its jaws. And this 13 foot specimen had an entire a 6 foot gillicus fish in its stomach. That actually killed Viscifectinus because the still living thrashing fish destroyed its organs from the inside. So if it swallows you whole you can at least take it down with you. Maybe you already know that leopard seals are terrifying predators that skin penguins and eat baby seals. 250 million years ago there was a creature that lived a similar lifestyle. And that was Notosaurus. A 21 foot long member of the Sauropterygia whose remains were found almost all across the world. Like a leopard seal it also evolved from land dwelling predators and made a few adjustments to living underwater. In its habitat Notosaurus was an apex predator that ate other marine reptiles. But it also hunted fish and prehistoric squid. Similar to the Darkosaurus and modern crocodiles it killed its prey by turning its head sideways rapidly while holding onto it. Which we can gather from its long needle like teeth and the musculature of the jaws. It's likely that the Notosaurus gave birth to life young even though it was a marine reptile and not a mammal. Something that is actually proven for some of its relatives, the plesiosaurs. This was also an adaption to life underwater. Everyone already knows about the mosasaurus that would surely have stopped you from going into the ocean 80 million years ago. But maybe you haven't heard about its smaller relative that made it so that you are also never safe in rivers. The first freshwater mosasaur. Pannoniasaurus is the name of this creature and it was discovered just a few years ago. At 18 foot and 1000 1200 pounds, this mosasaur was not even remotely on the same level as its much more famous cousin. But for a human that somehow got lost in time, it might be just as dangerous. Their lifestyle resembled that of river dolphins. But while these pink piranha killers are some of the smartest animals on earth, the Pannoniasaurus was probably closer to the level of a crocodile. And just like crocodiles, it had a flattened skull, perfect for ambushing animals on the riverbank camouflaged in shallow water. It's not clear if Pannonia 
Brontosaurus was confined to freshwater habitats only or if it changed its living space according to the season. However, it can be assumed that freshwater mosasaurs were quite widespread in Cretaceous Europe. The next river monster is even more dangerous, Rhizodus, the largest member of lobed fin fish. And the largest freshwater fish ever. Rhizodus was an enormous beast with combined characteristics of crocodiles, snake-headed fish and lungfish. At 23 foot and 4000 pounds, it was larger than a great white shark. This predatory fish would be especially dangerous for a human being that suddenly traveled back 340 million years, because it actually had its eye on land dwelling animals. And it could even follow them onto land. Its extremely flexible vertebrae allowed it to not only move side to side like a fish, but also vertically. In combination with its powerful fins and crawling movements, Rhizodos could actually pull its body onto land. And thanks to the lungs, it could also breathe there. They even found trackways that were probably caused by Rhizodos. This fish belongs to the tetrapodomorphs, a group that tetrapods belong to as well, and therefore reptiles and mammals. Which means that Rhizodos is closer related to us humans than it is to the average fish in an aquarium. Rhizodus was found worldwide in slow moving waters that are usually fairly murky. It probably hid between the vegetation and the water, sunken trees and similar cover possibilities in order to surprise attack its prey. Because Rhizodus had a cylindrically shaped body and unusually flexible fins that it could use to rapidly accelerate underwater. Which would be a perfect match for such a hunting strategy. The teeth of Rhizodus are very impressive and actually a little bit similar to those of a Tyrannosaurus. At up to 8 inches the largest ones reached the same length and they were also sturdy and quite massive. Thanks to its inner structure that distributed the force, Rhizodus teeth were able to withstand the stress that was caused by big struggling animals that it bit into. It had strong attacks, but this lobe-finned monster fish could also withstand a lot of damage at the same time, because it was covered by a layer of plate-like scales. This flexible suit of armor protected it, while it still allowed for a lot of movement. In comparison to the last creature, this one is hardly dangerous. Even its biggest specimen could barely even hurt you in any serious manner. But it was still very much terrifying, which is enough to keep me out of the water. Anemolocaris were the first apex predators on Earth. 500 million years ago they ruled the planet. Using their highly mobile pinchers they grabbed prey and maneuvered them into their circular shaped mouth hole that they used to suck in their food. Because they didn't have teeth they most likely only fed on soft organisms. Like Nectocaris for example, prehistoric squid-like beings without a hard shell. During their lifetime, Anemolocaris were the largest creatures on Earth at just 16 inches. They were widespread and ate the largest prey, which shaped the predator-prey relationship for future generations. Their swimming technique that consists of wave-like movements of their side flaps reminds me of a shrimp, an abnormal shrimp, and that is exactly what their name means. But back to an animal that can actually be very dangerous to you. And that is absolutely true for the Zashikasaurus, because it could swallow you whole. At 35 foot and a weight of 30,000 pounds, it's one of the biggest pliosaurs of all time. On par with the Chronosaurus, that reached pretty much the same measurements. The actual discovered fossil is smaller than that, but it stems from a specimen that hasn't quite finished growing. How Zashikasaurus moved in the water, the way it just flew through the water using its limbs was very difficult different from other prehistoric animals like mosasaurs and ichthyosaurs that used their tails for propulsion. You can also see this technique in many other animals like penguins for example, but with a substantial difference. Plesiosaurs used all four limbs for acceleration. Penguins on the other hand only have two limbs that they can use to speed up and other animals like sea turtles use two for propulsion and two for steering. But plesiosaurs could use all four of their limbs to generate speed and maneuver at the same time. They could also use different different swimming techniques to either swim faster or manage longer distances more efficiently. As a human you have absolutely no chance of escaping a beast like this. Zashikasaurus was especially fast and efficient even for a plesiosaur because of its streamlined body and large pedal like fins. This is a predator I'd rather not see in person. Just like this one which is a lot bigger, but maybe not as dangerous at least for a human. This is Shonisaurus popularis, one of the largest ichthyosaurs ever at 50 foot and 70,000 pounds. It's the size of a city bus, but twice as heavy. The Shonisaurus looks basically like a giant dolphin, only with an extra pair of fins on the side. And just like a dolphin, it also had to swim to the surface to breathe. And it also gave birth to life young, even though it wasn't
wasn't a mammal but a marine reptile. This is known from a spectacular fossil which looks like the mother died just while she was giving birth. In reality it's more likely that she died pregnant and that gases then pressed out the kid after that. A so-called coffin birth. Shonisaurus didn't eat microscopic little animals like people once thought. They are not the prehistoric equivalents of baleen whales. Instead they probably hunted prey similar to a sperm whale, giant squid. And also fish. They even found remains of a coelacan in the digestion tracts of a Shonisaurus. Both are prey that is generally found in great depths. To hunt these creatures, Shonisaurus were equipped with tiny teeth anchored in their jaws. And big eyes that they used to locate their prey. Whereas the visible part of the eye was only a small fragment of this enormous eye socket. Let's just hope it doesn't see you while you deep dive in the ocean 230 million years ago on your next time travel. And you also want to avoid the Prionosuchus, the second largest amphibian ever. Despite its name which means sock crocodile, this creature was not a croc but instead a Temnospondyli. Prionosuchus resembles a gharial pretty closely but at more than 18 foot it is quite a bit longer than most of them. At least on par with the biggest gharial ever seen which was killed in 19 in Pfizer butt. Unlike a crocodile, Pranosuchus didn't have a scaly skin protection, but instead naked skin like a salamander, newts and other amphibians. As a purely aquatic animal, its legs were extremely underdeveloped because it just needed them to steer underwater while swimming. Actually walking on land was probably not in the cards for this guy. Using its long snout, it hunted fish just like a gharial. But because of its size, this creature would also be dangerous to a person that strolls into its habitat under invited. Just like the Mastodonsaurus, the biggest and heaviest amphibian of all time. This animal reached 25 foot and 4400 pounds, making it bigger than modern saltwater crocodiles. But to be fair, most discovered fossils were from specimen only half that long that would have weighed just a fraction of that weight. Hemnospondyli, like the Mastodonsaurus were among the most successful hunters that ever existed on earth, even if they look pretty goofy and most people have never heard of them. Mastodonsaurus Saurus Giganteus looked like a semi-aquatic crocodile just without the skewards on their skin but instead many tiny plates of bone under their skin. This animal was similar to Prionosuchus but it was built just way more massive with a skull not reminiscent of a gharial but an actual big crocodile just even more massive and heavier. At the same length as a saltwater croc, Mastodonsaurus would reach about twice as much weight. In its jaws it had 5.5 inch long conical teeth perfect to grab its prey. That consists mostly of fish, looking at the size of his monster, probably pretty big fish. But as an opportunistic hunter, it probably also preyed on land animals coming to the water to drink or to cross it. Because of its enormous weight and its tiny limbs, Mastodonsaurus had to pretty much exclusively hunt underwater and wouldn't be much of a threat to us on land. There it was actually hunted itself by another predator called Patracotomus. But inside water, Mastodonsaurus reigned supreme, one very extraordinary character characteristic I have never seen on another animal before are its two tusks in the lower jaw that actually pierce through the upper jaw right next to the nostrils. It's almost like this creature wears a nose piercing. And if you only see the upper jaw it looks like it has four nostrils. Truly something special. In 1962 Samuel Paul Wells described the Kellawayasaurus, a 23 to 26 foot long plesiosaur with a body mass of 2800 pounds. Its 14 inch skull looks absolutely terrifying. But could and would this animal actually eat a human? Not necessarily, because these long-necked plesiosaurs mostly hunted fish. Their eyes were not on the side of their heads, but almost directly above it. This way they could, with their body camouflaged in the deeper, darker parts of the water, actually see even tiny little fish as a silhouette against the light using their stereoscopic vision. For a member of the Elasmosauridae family, the Kellawayasaurus was just mid-sized, whereas the Alberto Tonectus was an actual giant at about 30 8 feet. And its neck alone measured just as long as an entire Kellawayasaurus. Why these animals had insanely long necks like this is still somewhat of a mystery. There are many many different theories about which function it could have served, but we don't know for sure. There was something even more dangerous than all these deadly ocean and river predators and that's prehistoric parasites and bacteria lurking in the water. The human immune system would not be prepared for them and could not fight them accordingly. 100 million years ago stinging insects would also make sure that you're not safe even on land, but in the water every small cut could mean the end for you. On the other hand, predators, both on land and in the water, are less likely to eat us than one might think. And that is because hunters actually 
only rarely attack prey that they don't know at all. And hundreds of millions of years ago, we would be utterly unknown to all living creatures. I wouldn't count on it, but it would at least be something that would make surviving time traveling to those times a little bit easier.